blessed and happy Easter to all of you. And a warm welcome to all of our guests, visitors who are in Chicago for this holiday weekend, and also students who have returned from school. It's great to have you here in such a wonderful crowd as we witness those who are going to come into full communion with the church and also be baptized, confirmed, and receive their first Eucharist. It's a joyous night for all of us. There is something very peculiar about the gospel text we have for tonight. For this is the night in which we believe that the power of God raised Jesus from the dead, that he blasted forth from the tomb into new life. And yet, Jesus is absent. There's no appearance reported in the gospel that we have tonight. Now, I don't know about you, but if I were scripting and choreographing the resurrection, I may have done it a little differently. I would have had Jesus show up at Pilate's palace or Herod's house and made it the biggest I told you so in the history of humanity. <laughs> but that's just a bit too much Hollywood for Jesus. No, instead, what we have here are these women who come and they come to the tomb not because they believe that Jesus is going to rise from the dead, but because they love him. And that's why you're here tonight. And it's in your heart that Ezekiel tells us he will take away stony hearts and make them hearts of love, that God is working this night. For the resurrection of Jesus is much bigger than just Jesus as an individual rising from the dead. It's about the transformative power of God that works in all of creation, in all of humanity, and here this night in all of our hearts, transforming us. We heard on Holy Thursday evening that wonderful homily by Father Luke Camelli, who told us how Jesus loved to the very end. And we wish we could love like that. Our love is so poor and falls short. But tonight, he transforms our heart so we can begin to love to the end. And there are four major parts of the gospel tonight that helps us see where in human life God is working this night and in every age. The women set out early in the morning for the tomb and they are worried and anxious about how they're going to get in the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus. They're anxious about those things that they can't control. We live with that kind of anxiety. We worry ourselves to death over those things that we can't control. And so loving God and loving others is about, first of all, trusting that God is going to take care of those things because as soon as they get there, that stone is rolled away. So tonight, let the transforming love of the resurrection that's given to your hearts take away those worries that you come here with this night, those anxieties, those uncrossed T's and undotted lives, eyes of life that in some way make you paralyzed about the future. He's giving you in your hearts the ability to love him to the point where you trust him. And then they come into that empty tomb, that tomb which was a symbol for them of everything that has gone wrong in the past. Their greatest hopes dashed. Their life seemed to be over because they put their stock in Jesus. It is a reminder that the Lord also 
gives us hearts today that can allow us to not be paralyzed by our past mistakes. To be able to love ourselves as God loves us, as he heals those things of the past. That's why Jesus is called the Redeemer. He takes all of those things that have gone wrong and he heals them. He gives us that love to be able to love others who have hurt us in the past as well, who have disappointed us. That's the love that allows us to love to the end that he gives us tonight. And then we see this young man. He's not called an angel who's sitting in a tomb, but a young man. And he's dressed in white. And those early Christians who would have seen and heard that story would have identified that young man dressed in white as a newly baptized person, just like we will see tonight in those who are baptized. It's a reminder that we are to love the church, a church that is ever new and new members as we have tonight, a church that always needs us to bring a forgiving and loving heart so that new life can begin again. But also to trust that the Lord is working in our very midst to raise up new people to be dressed in white, to remind us of our own dignity. And finally, the women are told that they must go ahead to tell the disciples to go to Galilee. Why Galilee? Because that's where it all started. That's where they were first called, where they first learned to love the Lord. It is a reminder to them that this is all about love, not just faith. That is what will steer the course of their life ahead, deepening their love for Jesus Christ. That's the gift given to us tonight as we come here to celebrate the resurrection. It allows us to see when Monsignor Mayhall said in his Good Friday homily that with the death of the Lord, that pendulum stopped. But now it swings again. This is a new day, a new age, because he gives us a new heart. Yes, the resurrection is not just about Jesus. It's also about us. He raises us from our dead old ways and gives us a new heart so that we can love to the very end. And that's why we have come here tonight. We love the Lord. We want to love him to the end and to love others to the end as he did for us. And so tonight, we say Alleluia. It is our song, not only because Jesus has been raised from the dead, but so would we.